If there is one new Pokemon to be very afraid of, it is definitely Ursaluna. This thing is actually insane, and it's really fun to use. In today's match, you'll get a good look at why this thing is overpowered as hell. And if you're new here, consider hitting that subscribe button. Less than half the people that watch these videos are subscribed, and I'd really appreciate it. Let's get into the match. All right, so to start things off, my opponent is gonna lead off with the snail mode Gudra, as I decide to toss out young Lemonhead, and I don't have much to do in this matchup, and I also don't really know what this thing is kind of working with, so I decide to just go right for the Stealth Rock here. That's gonna help me a lot in breaking Focus Sashes, potentially. And it's just gonna give me a sec to kind of just scout out this Gudra. I know you see generally Assault Vest on this thing, Hits pretty hard, especially, and this thing is actually kind of bad for my team. But I get that Stealth Rock up. This thing actually ends up going for the Shelter, which 10 out of 10 did not expect. And now this thing's defense is looking pretty crazy, especially because my team is pretty much all physical attackers. So I've got myself a situation, and the plan is this. I'm going to end up going into uh, the Grim Snarl, basically just so I can kind of hinder what this thing can do. I can set up screens, I can get a parting shot, and I can try to kind of pivot into the Ursa Luna. So I come in on a Dragon Pulse. You yeah, absolutely love to see it. Of course, this thing does have the stab uh, with the Flash Cannon, which is super effective. I'm fine with that because I'm able to set up my light screen here, um, and I know that I can easily take one of those. So it does go for that Flash Cannon. The move animation on Hisui and Gudra is actually amazing. Hey, leave a comment. What is your favorite Hisuian Pokemon? And if there's anything you'd like me to try out, let me know, because I definitely want to try all these things. But... I'm gonna go for the parting shot here. I've got my light screen up. I figure now I can hit it with a parting shot and now this Gudra cannot flash cannon its way out of a fucking wet paper bag. And that's exactly what I needed. It can be as defensive as it wants, but if it can't touch me in return, I'll tell you what, Cocaine Bear is gonna have himself a time. So uh, the good thing about going first on that um, parting shot is actually super nice that I come in, I'm able to take an attack and then immediately activate my burn orb. Now that is because Urza Luna, of course, is Guts, and now pair that with a Stab, Earthquake, and Facade. This thing is an absolute terror, and if you do not have your Sea Bear Circle drawn correctly, you are gonna get eight. Uh, so I go for that Earthquake there. It does well over half, and that is with a very defensive Gudra. Um, and also, I'm just absolutely shrugging off these attacks here, because I'm actually max HP in attack. Uh, so this thing has the bulk to be able to take attacks and just dish out insane damage in return. So. Now I just go ahead and finish it off with the facade just in case there's a switch. It's definitely enough to take care of the Gudra. There's nothing on this squad that wants to switch in on the Ursa Luna, so able to grab the free kill there. However, I am a slow-ass bear, and now they get a revenge switch on whatever they want against this thing. So I do want to try to conserve health on this Ursa Luna as much as possible. It's looking really good against their team. Uh, and they decide to bring in Urshifu. Now my team, four of them are weak to water. I have a horrible time against this fucking bear specifically, and I really need to try to neutralize this thing as much as possible. And the best way for me to do that uh, is to go back into Uxie and potentially try to set up some speed control in the form of Trick Room. Uh, so it goes for the Surging Strikes here. Now that's gonna hit me a solid three times. I actually thought this Uxie was physically defensive. It turns out it's actually specially defensive. So I don't take that super nicely, and that is relatively bad. However, I do have the tight matchup here, and I'm thinking if I can get this Trick Room up, it is gonna be over for these hoes. But my boy in its lemon hard hat has some work to do. So I am going to try to set up this trick room. I'm thinking I don't really have a switch into this thing. And my only option is to either stay in here and just be able to try to get a revenge switch. Or potentially just let this go through. So I go for that trick room. Turns out he actually ends up going for the trailblaze. Trying to grab some speed control in case of potential like Scarf, Hisuian Arcanine. Uh, things like that that can outspeed. But I'm able to live that and set up the trick room. So I pulled the old Uno reverse card on his ass. That speed boost is now uh, definitely not going to help him out. And anything slower for the next five turns will go first. And you already know that Ursa Luna is kind of the main beneficiary of that trick room. Uh, so I'm thinking while I'm here, I'm actually faster. I can just go for a nice little psychic. I have that uh, ability to just basically knock this thing out. But he actually isn't going to end up going for the Terra here. Going to go for that Terra Water. Uh, which essentially just gets rid of that fighting type uh, and now is no longer weak to psychic so it will be able to live this psychic but honestly my main goal is for now Uxie to just essentially die that's why this thing basically carries memento uh, i could set up that trick room and then dip the fuck out if need be but it works out here that i'm able to get some solid chip damage here and then another surging strikes does take care of the Uxie. so the trailblaze turns out to be a pretty big misplay because now cocaine bear is all fueled up on mountain dew and cocaine and is ready to see what this thing is made of. Nothing like a good old fashioned bear fight on a Friday afternoon. So Cocaine Bear comes in and there's truly nothing that can switch into this. Nothing is faster at this moment in time. So basically we just get to see what the bear 
can ha has in him. I, I do go for that Terra Normal, just on the chance that this thing is carrying the priority with the Aqua Jet. Um, seeing that it did have Trailblaze, I figure it probably doesn't have that Aqua Jet, but I'm gonna go for the Terra Normal regardless. That is gonna boost Facade damage even further if this thing needed any more damage, but I can't actually click Facade here, uh, mostly because there is the Golden Go in the back of their team. So I just go for the Earthquake, easily outspeed with that Trick Room, and down goes the Urshifu. That is the scariest Mon that they had on their side, so good to see that thing taken care of. And now it comes down to basically how much utility we can get out of Urza Luna before the Trick Room goes away. So I get hurt by my burn, that is fine. Also Light Screen goes away, but since I'm faster, I don't even care about taking attacks. They're gonna end up going into the Great Tusk. Now, Great Tusk comes in and we actually are gonna see this thing pop the booster energy, which is actually gonna give it an attack boost, which tells me this is likely just an offensive Great Tusk, which means this thing should die to a guts boosted normal Terra facade from Ursa Luna. So I am gonna be able to outspeed under the Trick Room and this is the true beauty of Ursa Luna. Taking down one of the biggest threats in OU, the Great Tusk, just dies to a one hit KO facade is actually insane and the rampage continues taking that thing down in one hit is amazing because that only used one turn of trick room and we're still we're still vibing extra speedy over here i do get hurt by some burn but when you're on cocaine and mountain dew it doesn't matter how much burn recoil you take you just you have these things having an absolute time over here uh, so now they get another revenge switch in comes the golden go now this thing is actually going to be carrying the uh the air balloon which turns out i cannot earthquake this thing but i do actually carry the crunch coverage uh, for situations like this and I love me some cinnamon toast crunch cinnamon is the winamon and we're just gonna go ahead and uh, Take a nice little golden bite out of little dude So Luna just racking up the kill streak doing exactly what this thing is built to do uh, Big threats like golden go out of the way Unfortunately, however, that is going to end the trick room So I was able to take advantage of it and then I was poking holes in the entire team uh, and now it looks like the rain is over. Yuxi's no longer around. I can't get up a trick room. And in comes the Zangoose. Now this thing is going to be able to outspeed. And I don't really have a switch into this. Zangoose is actually kind of scary for my squad at the moment. Uh, so I let this thing finish me off with the close combat. Uh, but going out with style. Got the young diamond on my head. Blinging the fuck out. But down goes the Ursaluna. But I'm proud of what I was able to accomplish. And now I do have a little bit of an issue on my hand. In that their last Pokemon is going to be the Iron Moth. So I have to deal with... Zengus and then that their moth. So I do have a plan and I also have a cleaver and I have a dream So I'm gonna try to make this thing work now My best plan is to go back into the grim snarl I try to set up some screens I want to prioritize setting up both reflect to deal with the Zengus and the light screen for the iron moth in the back Which could be a wild card. So I go ahead and get that up with the light clay That's gonna stick around for quite a while uh, allows me to nice and easily take a close combat and I, I basically, if I had Choice Scarf on my Hisuian Arcanine, it actually wouldn't be a problem, but I'm actually running Choice Band, so I can't really run the risk of the speed tie happening. We're both actually base 90 speed, both Zengus and Hisuian Arcanine, and I don't like the close combat. I've already used my Terra, so I basically have to get up these screens and kind of see if Cleaver can finish off the job for me. So this thing does finish me off with the facade. There's hella facades all over the place. This thing does get uh, the poison boost, so it boosts its damage uh, with that poison. And uh, it is slowly whittling itself down with that uh, bad poison. So now I'm going to go into the greatest Hisuian design of all time, Cleaver. This thing is absolutely amazing. Sometimes you got to bust out a little cleavage, a little late, little late game cleavage, never hurt nobody. And my best win condition is actually going to be going for the agility. I can double my speed and that'll allow me to outspeed both this Zangus and the Iron Moth in the back. Plus with that reflect up, I should be able to take a close combat or two. Um, so it does actually do just below half. I'm able to then go for that agility and with this thing's defense is just absolutely abysmal. Definitely you breathe on the Zangus and he's gonna die. But he's gonna have to deal with these sharp ass cle cleaves. <laughs> Call me Cleveland over here. So uh, I now have my speed boost. This thing is set up doing what it needs to do. I go for the stone axe and I miss. I literally could have clicked X scissor but I did it for the style of showing this thing's uh, <laughs> cool ass new move. It actually, it sets up Stealth Rock if you are able to hit it. However, I already have Stealth Rock up. It didn't really matter. This thing ends up going for the Swords Dance. Could gonna need a little bit more damage if you wanted to finish me off with another close combat. But I'm gonna go for that nice 100% accurate X Scissor just to ensure uh, that the Zangoose goes down. This thing actually has the ability Sharpness, which does boost those cutting moves. Not that I needed any extra damage against the Zangoose, but now the final Pokemon is gonna be that Iron Moth. Um, it's gonna take that stealth rock damage break any potential focus ash and now thanks to that agility 
Uh, a stone axe, if I can connect, should solidify the game here. So down goes the moth. Cleaver did exactly what it needed to do to finish off the game for me there, and that is going to do it. So thank you guys very much for watching. I do really appreciate all the support. Quick shameless plug to my new merch. Hit that link in the description if you would like to support the channel and get yourself fresh in the process, and I will see you guys next time. Peace out.